Hello and welcome to this special bonus episode of The Dairy Edge. Chagas are running a weekly Let's Talk Dairy webinar series, which is also being made available as a podcast. On this week's webinar, milk quality specialist Don Crowley joins Stuart Childs to demonstrate the use of Herd Plus to manage mastitis and somatic cell count. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, I'm delighted to introduce my colleague, Dan Crowley, um, who's working in the Chagas office in Clannacilty, but is well known for his uh, role in cell count work across the country. Um, And today, we're going to talk about a very important uh, aspect. We're always talking about milk recording and that people should be milk recording. What do people actually do when they get milk recording results back? Uh, A lot of them end up on top of the filing cabinet or maybe up on top of the kitchen inside in the envelope. And we see that cell count can creep up as the course of the year passes by. So today, Dan is going to go through the reports that you get when you get your milk recording uh, reports out sent out to you. And just to help you try and find your way through them in order to identify the uh, things to look out for and maybe to identify cows that should be culled from an early stage so that you can be planning for that maybe. And also just to make sure that the spread doesn't continue within the herd and that you kind of keep yourself con- under control for the, the rest of the year. So we're going to um, I'll hand over to Dan there now. We're going to show some reports. You just hear Dan's voice over it a lot of the time. Um, and you can put us in questions to us on the Q&A. Uh, please make sure that you put in plenty of questions because it's a great opportunity to ask Dan questions. He's like the village schoolmaster. His head holds an awful lot of knowledge and information. And we have to. it's important that we try and extract that knowledge and information from his head. So I'll hand over to you, so Dan. No problem, sir. Thanks very much. Um, Look, tis, tis, um, tis an area that's a, a big problem at the moment from the point of view of high, lads trying to deal with high cell count at the moment. And then fellas trying to very low cell count herds getting high incidence of clinical mastitis. And I suppose what we're going to do now today is try and tease out what the milk recording can tell us to help, number one, stop it, and two, deal with issues that we have. When I go looking into herds, the first report I always have a look at is the cell check farm summary sheet. It's a great synopsis of what the herd is doing at the moment. And to be honest, you can look backwards as well. It's synopsis, it's lovely. And um, there's a lot of information in this sheet. So what I do there now is, um, so you can see there, there's a star rating given for your somatic cell count, your mastitis control during the lactation, how the dry period did, and how your clinical mastitis is going. So the more information we put in, the more accurate this is. You can scroll away down there, Stuart. We'll... Um, so you can see now in this herd, the recorded cell count was 140. The bulk tank from the somatic, from the quap was 82,000. There's a 12% of the herd are over 200,000. The target's 15, grand job. And there's a still an avoidable milk class of 36 litres. And on the graph there now, you can just see on the right-hand side, the bulk tank and uh, the milk recording are matching very well. Often around this time of the year now, we could see the bull tank actually getting a rise now from May to June, June. And a lot of that case is that this artificial rise is because calves are sold and this milk isn't dumped and this milk is put into the tank and you can get a, a false jump in it. But in this herd, the bull tank and uh, milk recording are matching very, very closely. So, which is a good sign because you look, it's, it's a sign that even before look yet, there isn't an awful lot of, um, there isn't a few problem codes that have been milked out and given to calves just, Managing and that's usually the cause the discrepancy between the milk recording and the bull tank. You can scroll away down there, so Stuart. So, right, first thing, so is look at it. This is the mastitis during the lactation. So, what this is look and tell us now how are we going now after this milk recording? What cows are recently infected? What does that mean? That means that a cow that was low the last milk recording under 200,000, but she's high this milk recording. So, in this herd, six out of 91 cows are high this recording that were low the last recording. So that's the tar is 7%. So they're just on the target is 7%. How many of them are persistently infected? So that's cows that were high the last milk recording, over 200,000, and high again this milk recording, 7%. So seven out of 107 cows are high. It's important to know those because what, that is, what you're watching for here is, is there infection spreading in the herd? So if I get my milk recording back, and let's say the persistent infection is 10% or 7% like it is. But the recent infection could be up at 25 and 30%, which we're seeing a lot of now at the moment. That means I didn't take, if I had moved at the start and cluster dipped those six or seven cows after the first milk recording, 
to the mitigated hugely in preventing the recent infection from going up. So in this herd now, look, they're holding steady. There's seven that are high, the last one and this one, plus six new ones. So there's 13 cows now that are over 200,000. So the thing from here on in now is we just have to be careful is we'd have, we should go dipping those 13 cows to make sure because the rise in infection, this is what causes this rise in cell count towards back end of lactation. These cows are spread to other cows during the milking. These, and if they're in the first row or two, they'll pass it to the next day at cows. And that's why you see your cell count rising from August, September on. Generally, it can go earlier on some herds, but generally you'll see it rising away until you're three, four hundreds at the back of the year. So that's a great one to look at. You should always keep an eye on that one. See the recent infection rate and the persistence. Is the thing, are the low, what you're basically looking for, are the high ones staying high, but the low ones are staying low. So at least it isn't spreading and I can farm my way out of it. All right, so you can scroll away down there now. So, all right, next part of the sheet now is the distribution of the cell count in the herd. So, what I'm looking for is basically is that is 85% of the herd under 200,000. And the red bar there is the recent milk recording. So, you can see there it's around 86%. And the, the gray one beside it is the previous milk recording. So, it's actually improved in this herd. There's more cows low in this milk recording than the last one. And if you see there, there's. Um, so what's happened in this herd? Those heifers, cows that were a bit in the 200 to 500 bracket, they've improved, and the ones from 500 to a million has disimproved, and the ones over a million have stayed the same. But this is, I suppose, for the low cell count herds, the one on the right is a crucial one, because a lot of you outside are now, our cell counts are 80, 100,000, but you may be getting a lot of clinical mastitis, which is a huge issue at the moment, the strep mastitis. And it's really crucial that you start recording your case as a clinical mastitis. And the target really is about 3 less than 3% per month. That's where that red bar, that red dotted bar is, is set at. So ideally, I'd like to be sitting at one or two, two cases per month. Why are they red and why are they gray? If they're red, that mastitis happened within 30 days of that co-calving. If it's gray, it happened greater than 30 days from calving. So I don't have to worry about the days. I see we have to do that. But if I send in, record my cases of mastitis accurately on the day, this is a great idea because if there's an awful lot of reds, that means it's probably a dry co issue that's caused this clinical mastitis in the spring or whenever time, you know. And if it's grey, it's more a contagious or, like, uh, you know, during lactation issue. So when they record, I saw the mistake, right, the second question now is why is that grey bar even those two cases up over 20% and the red bar on the one case in May up to 20%. When we looked at this myself and Stuart, the way that is, is to highlight that was recording wrong. When ICBF, when you're recording cases to ICBF, what ICBF want to do, want is your number of cases. You see the in, in brackets there, in cases under clinical mastitis, not the number of treatments. So the mistake we make, so let's say I get a case for mastitis this morning. I log her in as mastitis back left. That's it, as far as ICBF are concerned. That's all they want to know. If, even though I'm treated her for five or six days, I don't record it anymore then. If she gets it again in two weeks, I will put in that case. But they only want to know the number of cases, not the treatments. So in this scenario, the treatments were recorded, and that jumps up mad high to show that it was uh, recorded wrong, if that makes sense. All right. So, right. So here now, the clinical case of mastitis, February, there was a nice red one. So there was six cases of mastitis in February within 30 days of calving. And there was two cases of mastitis in February. Well, we don't know. That's probably record. It's actually one case when we looked at it uh, in, in the gray slide. Okay. So if you look at this herd, it's predominantly close to calving anyway. Is here. Right. We'll scroll away down. So, right, we, this is just a snaps. I always have a look at the dry code just to see how the last year's dry code went. And in this herd, look, there was 15% um, new infection rate. So, the, I dried off cows last autumn at less than 200,000, 71 of them, and 11 of those calved down higher than what I dried them off at. The target is 10%. That's 15%. So, that's very important just to have an eye on trying to buy my technique. And, and this is something we're going to deal with now later on in the season. We want heifers, three out of 18 heifers calved down high, 17%. The target is 15. 
like with that number of heifers, one can make an awful difference to percentages. So, you know, two out of 18, so, you know, you just look, have to bear in mind the figures involved as well. Cure rate over the dry period was 12, cure 12 out of 19. Target is 85%. That, like, it's 63%. So that's something we need to look at coming up to the drying off period as well. Do we need to look at the antibiotic we're using? Do we need to look at culling? You know, that kind of thing. So look, we, we'll talk about this now as we, in, in later. Right? But look, there is something there around drying off. When we look back up at the clinical cases and the bars, there was cases in, there's a good few in the red bars. So if we combine the two, that they can't, I got mastitis within 30 days of their calving, plus there's question marks on the cure rates and the new infection rates in the dry period. That's something that needs to be addressed. And we'll, we'll, we'll check, we'll talk about that. So there's definitely something that needs to be looked at. Next thing I flick over to then is what they call the farm summary sheet, right? Nice little synopsis in it. So there's 108 cows in this herd, right? Cell count is 140,000 with 13 cows over 200,000. That's what the 13 means. And there's 17 cases of mastitis. Okay, so that's where the clinical case mastitis are put in. No, there'll be anomalies in that. That might be 100% accurate because if I had put in a tube for a number of days, they'd put it on as cases by mistake. You know, when we saw the big long red bar and the big gray bar. So, but look, we'll just assume that they're there. No, we want to see what's the spread of that through the herd. First calvers, the heifers has 18 heifers averaging 235 cell count with four heifers over 200,000. Okay. The second calvers, there's 19 of them, average cell count for 49,000, and they had four cases of mastitis. Okay, none of them are over 200,000, uh, but they had four cases of clinical mastitis. And the third calvers, average cell count 59, one over 200,000, with two cases of mastitis. And then the older cows, 183,000, eight over 211 cases of mastitis. Okay, so right. This is an interesting one. So generally what you'll see, it, it's it's a typical of uh, where there's probably, it looks like there's a, a, without having a culture and sensitivity, the first thing is it looks like there's a contagious infection inside here. Why am I saying that? The highest bunch, usually the highest bunch are the oldest cows, but the highest bunch in this one are the heifers at 235, okay? They're higher on cell count, but if you look at the level of infection, is still most in the oldest cows, in the fourth lactation plus. They're 183, but there's eight cows over 200, and they had 11 cases of mastitis. So I have a staph aureus infection probably spreading. It went after the heifers, so the, neck, the heifers were the most prone to it, and I'm starting to lose the bounce of my heifers. Like The heifers should be averaging as a group around your yeah, under 100,000, 40, 50, 60,000. You'd like to see them. Look, when you see the second calves at 49 and 59 there, the heifers should be hovering around there as a bunch. So it's you can see there now that it's it's there's a certain level of spread inside in this herd. And it's something just to just to bear in mind, okay? And if Dan, you... Yeah, go ahead. Is it, yeah. Is it a, an example of something that's just gone wrong in the last 12 to 18 months because of the fact that your second lactation are good and your third yeah. lactation are good, such so as really something that's only just happened recently. Exactly. That's a good point. No, George, you're dead right. If, if I've been fighting this for a number of years, what you'll see with that is the, the second and thirds have kind of been stepping. Generally, what you'll see is if this was over a couple of lactations, or maybe there's two things what causes that, Stuart. I culled heavy last year, right? So I reduced the infection rate to it. Mm -hmm. Or else... I've been fighting this for a few years and keep eliding it with heifers coming through. But the seconds or thirds are, 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 are slightly worse than the heifers are the same. You know, the, that gap, they'd be 180, 200,000, the second calves, the third calves would be the same, you know. Yeah. But if you look at the other reason, why is it spreading as well? Is the clinical cases of mastitis are across the age groups, bar the heifers. So they, and if you look within that low group, if you look, that's another one to look for there now, Stuart, right? If you took the second calvers, I had four cases of mastitis with no cow over 200,000 in that group. So that's a real indication of a strep infection because it doesn't impact the somatic cell count like Staph aureus does. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, if you look at the fourth lactation plus, there's 11 cases of mastitis with eight cows over 200. When you see that, 
it, that's a kind of a staph type. So in this herd, there's probably a staph and a strip infection. We don't know, but that's one of the guidelines you'll be looking for. So it's just highlighting the importance, lads, of, of getting a culture and sensitivity to know what's going on in the herd. But there, there's, there's, there's two dynamics probably going on in this herd, okay? No, you can scroll away down. The other thing I look for here is, is when I go down to it, I what I'm looking for here now is when I drive these, there was 90, what I look at is October 19. If you see October 19, <clears throat> I drive these cows, the herd of cows averaged 121,000 in cell count. <clears throat> okay? And in February 2020, there were 199. So they calved in cell count. So they calved down higher than what I drive them off at. So, and if we look at the clinical cases of mastitis in the red bar, thinking back to the previous one, with our cure rate being marginal to poor, there's definitely a dry co-issue inside in this herd that needs to be addressed. So the, what you're looking for there is just a basic thing. Are they calving down higher than what I'm drawing them off at? Just that alone, you know? Um, so even there now, you're building up your picture. You can see there now, February, March, and, and April, now they went down to 58, but then jumped back to 186, then in, in May. So, you know, things happy around and look, the may want, you know, so there's infection happening around inside in the herd. Okay, so that's our farm summary sheet. So, what we generally do then, so right, if you're in winter and spring, to divide it, you look for there in this herd. It's of little relevance to be honest, because there was one cow. It's a great one from the point of view of I've a split herd. Do you know from the point of view of um, is there a problem within my winter milk herd or my spring herd? So that dynamic is in there as well in this herd. You know that that's negligible. You wouldn't be paying taking any cognizance in that. You know. Um. Yep. We'll flip on out to the the problem co sheet. Okay. The problem co sheet. A great sheet from this point of view. Right. This will tell us a lot of information. So what it is? It's, it's all the cows. The problem cows. Any cow that's over two hundred thousand. If they go over two hundred thousand in any milk recording, they will be on this sheet and they'll stay on it. Even if they're only twenty thirty thousand. No. Um, so once they go over 200,000, they go on this sheet and they stay there. It ranks them in the order of contribution to the bull tank, not in the order of cell count. So you can see that 2577, she's 25.9% of the bull tank. She's a quarter of the bull tank with a cell count of 3.3 .3 million. Okay. And the second co there, 3272, is 12.5. So you're thinking if you add the top three cows are probably 50% of the bull tank. Okay, or they're not, they're 35, let me see now, 25, 30, 40, 45. So the top four are around half the bull tank, okay? No, the first thing what are you looking for is, what I do is I look as, to say 25.77, her average cell count last year is on the right-hand side of the page, 488,000, and there was seven counts over 200,000. To calve down at 250,000, and it's high all along. She's a fourth lactation go. Contributing high, even though she's only four, relatively young by a lot of farmers. And she is a cow that should be culled. She should be earmarked for culling. Even though the lactation is with her, the dry, she's after going through two or three dry cow. One thing you could do in this with a young cow like that, you could go back to last year's milk recording and see how did that cow do in 2018 and just see, was it just one? But in general, if a cow was high last year, and high again this year, cut your losses, get rid. You take a cow 2054, look at the fourth one down there now. This is a very good one now. This is why the record, the record the instance of mastitis, 391 last year, eight counts over 200,000, and she had two cases of clinical mastitis last year. Calved down at 775, high all along. She had a case of mastitis on the 1st of May, and she's a seventh lactation. Gone. She should get the road because they're they're just she they're a typical staph aureus type co. And the problem, even though these this is very regular milk recording that this herd is doing, there could still be big fluctuations in those cows cell counts between those milk recordings. There could be one two million in between because they shed intermittently. So, okay, the the question above. 3272, we'll deal with that as a heifer. How do I know it's a heifer? Because it's one, but there's no milk card on the right-hand side, okay? She's a first lactation. She calved down at 436,000, and she's been rising progressively all along. And if you did get milk card, the milk recording, 
one thing to remember lads is that when the milk recording on the 15th of March which you, I can see from above it it gives the dates all the recordings are above it that heifer now when she was first calved she should have been paddle tested and checked to see how she is an infection so she was there at 4.36 to be honest that was the time to treat her with first calvers going in aggressively with an antibiotic preparation treatment talk to your vet on this it could be injectable it could be tubes if you can identify the quarter but there's no doubt about it for first calvers intervening early with an antibiotic you will get your best bang for your buck they, like that infection now inside in that heifer over the last these couple of months and at the rate she's deteriorating yeah, it'll be fairly risky whether she'll survive into next lactation. She's going to be tried. There's no doubt about it. If that heifer's in calf, we'll always saying she's going to get a dry coat, so forth. But she's a, a heifer that could potentially be in trouble again next year. Okay, if she had been treated earlier, um, we you know we could have a different scenario. Okay. So Dan, I suppose just on the pedal tests point there, um, obviously stress around calving can cause heifers especially to have a slightly yeah. higher cell count maybe. Yeah. Um, you you make a comment on that there because you you often say about um, you have to interpret the pedal test correctly as well. There's no point in throwing antibiotics into a heifer that's only stressed after calving. That's right. That's right. A good point, sort And then like scroll down there just in case we see a heifer down like that. Just go down there at the page. You see them you usually see them at the bottom of the page because they might be high at the start. start yeah, yeah. yeah. Going away down there. Going away down there. There no. There no. Look that yeah. one. So that's that's your typical one. There no. Say twenty nine sixty five. We know it's a heifer. She calved down at six twenty eight. So what Stuart is getting at there, lads, is if I have a heifer that's stressed after calving. That's an adrenaline, just, she's higher on adrenaline, it's the fight or flight hormone. So what's the body gonna do? It's gonna release immune, uh, you know, antibody or um, somatic cell counts into all the quarters. So when I'll paddle test her, I'll see a reaction on a, in three or four. And what farmers may say to me, I notice nothing in them because all three or four may be the same. They might be slightly grainy or something, but they won't be one quarter sticking out. So if I paddle test that heifer, like that 2965, She'd probably be high in three or four quarters. You leave her alone, and within a week, she's back down to her 30s, 19s, 20s, you know, when they settle in. If I paddle test that heifer and it's high in one quarter, well, then you, you in, intervene, you know. That 25, 25, no, is a, is a second calver, and you see, like, that could have been a stress around the calving. She was 18,000 last year. as a, She's a fifth calver. She calved only 800,000, then 7, 17, 16. So, you know, so... Heifers react slightly different around calving. And, and so, you know, you'll get little anomalies like that. And the only reason way you'll find that kind of thing is, is by being getting proficient on the paddle test to identify those. Okay? You go up there, so you'll see 2660. If you see, oh, that one there, 2680. Sorry, yeah. So look, 30. She had a 56. And now she went up to 2.5 million, back down to 11,000. You know, she would have been probably got a case of mastitis on the 26th of March and got a ver we've got a very good cure rate now in that cow because she's consistently holding that. But this spread, if you just look at that page there, this spread going on in that herd, like if you look at the cow above her, 23.53 went from 29 up to 2.12 and back down. So there is infection. And if you look at 23.53 last year, even though she averaged 41,000 last year, she had a case of clinical mastitis. So... These clinical mastitis do leave their marks inside and cows. But it, as you can see, as we're looking through these pages, the recording of the clinical cases of mastitis, it, it, it offers hugely to our understanding of the dynamic of mastitis within the herd and for yourselves to look at it as well, especially from the point of view of identifying cows to cull and cows to treat. Like, if you go way back up there again, Stuart, and see, we'll see if there any other anomalies we can... Um, one, uh, yeah, I, that type one. I, what, what I wanted to highlight with this one now is twenty three ninety four. There now, she's sometimes your staff, you, Danisha. she's your staff, and sometimes George, you could see that the wrong way around. In the sense, the forty seven could be the first one that she calved, yeah. that calving down, and you think she's fine, and next thing they're back up to one or two million, and you'll notice this. Some of the lads will notice this in their own milk carding. So they were in trouble last year, not very bad, five six hundred thousand. She wasn't bad, but high enough. 
any case of mastitis, but she's your classic staph aureus now inside in the heart. Again, you see, this is where the recording of the mastitis is wrong. You see here now, in this heart, they recorded mastitis on the 17th of March, and they chewed them again on the 19th of March. That goes in as two cases of mastitis. All we needed to know there was the 17th of March. The 19th shouldn't have gone in, if that makes sense. And that's why the red bar went mad up. So she calved on the 17th of March. She calved on the 6th of February. And she got her case of mastitis on the 17th of March. So she's in the gray bar over in the cell check report. So the recording of the clinical case of mastitis is important. Okay. Um, Here then, Dan, we'll say 3279 heifer cave down going along grand yeah, yeah. For, two, for two months, nearly three months, and we're beginning to rise up again now. Yeah. So yeah. it's just probably related to the likes of this. That's right. And is, That's right. there's a good chance too, Dan, I suppose, isn't there? That, and it's something, like like you said there earlier, we'll be, we'll be talking again with you maybe later in the season in relation to drying off and so forth. Mm. But like the fact that this herd is every four weeks for recording, they're mm. catching these here. That's or with right. a staph aureus infection, there is a possibility that you could actually go through um, a, maybe a four, a four recordings only or a six recording scenario and not yeah. catch them at all because of the yeah. time cycle. Yeah, you're dead right. And that's why, Stuart, I'll, we'll go into the profiles after a bit and I'll show you why you have to use that in the four. And you're 100% right. That is a weakness in the system. And if you look at that, code air 2394 is what they call an intermediate cheddar. She used 1.2 million in March, then went down to 47, back up to 246, down to 21. And what happened is there's a little abscess inside that other and it pops every two or three weeks. And that's why... When it's cleared up, she's perfect. And that's why farmers will notice a jump in their bull tank every so often. And then it corrects itself without them doing anything. And it's just one or, a, one or two cows. Not many. It depends on the scale of herd and the operation. And one or two cows just shedding at the time. And if you take that heifer, 32.79, that's one quarter that's gradually getting more and more infected as the season is going on. So at 72, there was an infection in one of those quarters. and it's getting progressively worse because it's not being dealt with. No, in a lot of these scenarios, the dry co will see after that heifer. It isn't that you have to intervene with all those, but paddle testing that heifer now the next time, especially the heifers, will be very important, you know? Okay. And like the two heifers above above us there now, the one heifer calved down high, 3274, and is there's an infection, one of the quarters, because it's corrected, but it's it's gradually disimproving then again, whereas 3241, the one above her again is probably just one quarter that's gradually disimproving and this is the you see what if you can see with this herd lads even though it's a very good herd there's four pages of cows that's another thing to look for if you scroll up to the top there Stuart, like this is one page of four so this is a very good herd but there's still four pages of infected cows do you know so that were over 200,000 at some stage since the start of lactation so but you can the see. whole thing is adding together, though, Dan, isn't it? Like we'll say, when we oh, looked yeah. at the, the cell check farm summary report, the, the first yeah. report that we looked at and saw that there was a poor cure rate over the yeah. over the dry period yeah. and they had a, a good share of infection then in the early um, post-calving period. Yeah. And that's meaning that there's a good few cows are after hitting this report. No, I suppose there's also the influence of the regular recording that's going to increase the numbers, possibly picked up too, that might be missed in some cases too. Yeah, point, yeah. There's, point, um, yeah. there's just kind of step by step we're building the, the, the situation we're building the picture on it yeah. you know so you know, and I like to be fair like you, you can see in a very good herd you know the cell count is very good in this herd but you can see how the infection rise away like this 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 herd was going to come under pressure towards the late lactation this is why the, the, minimizing the risk of infection and the spread is so important because this is a classic type of herd that the cell count is going to start rising nicely now maybe july august september and you know and could be fighting it then towards the end of lactation you know so and you can see how, how we're building that picture up we might go into profiles you know there's just a couple of questions there yeah. Dan. Oh, yeah. i'll just throw them at you first um and i suppose this is actually something i meant to say to you i suppose we're talking about recording the cases of mastitis so would you just quickly go through the different ways that people can do it yeah, um, just so people um, are able to move into the space that we're telling them to get into. Yeah, t t is, um, there's um, 
So I suppose that there's a there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can you can get into your um, first way of doing it is you can do it on the phone. There's an 089 number on the back of your white book. And if any of you have it, there's an 089 number I can't remember off the top of my head. We'll we'll put it up on it. That you can text into ICBF mast space we'll say 16 or 7. And that is my case of mast I just then. That goes, you text that in, that'll automatically populate those cells then. Okay. A more accurate way of doing it would be I have my white book or I jot it down somewhere and when I'm inside in the breakfast, I pop in here or go in and line and basically I go into record events. And in that scenario, then I'm putting in my date, the co number, the quarter, and what treatment I use. So that's a more detailed um, recording then again. But if you were just inside in the parlor and you just wanted to record my cases, Mastitis, the texting in of it is a very good way of doing it. It's on the spot, you're less likely to forget about it. And if you had it built into the number, just record MAST under your contacts list. And all you're doing is send a message, MAST, M A S T, with a space, with the code number, and that'll automatically populate them. You know, and it's, it's an 089 number, it's in the back of your book, and it, it's, it's a, something we really have to, to, to can't make it more convenient. It's just a simple thing. We all have our phones with us, like it's a simple thing to do. And you yeah. can go back then and, and elaborate in, in record events then. Yeah, and the other way then, of course, is to use the, the app like um, HerdApp oh, or uh, HerdWatch or whatever. HerdWatch, yeah. the Herd yeah. exactly. You know, yeah, the HerdWatch, brilliant. They're, ta they're all before. talking to each other now. Yeah. So they'll populate it again. But again, you see, there's a slight anomaly there in, in, that we're trying to work on is that if I'm recording all my treatments in, a herd, in the herd watch, because I'm, it's going to be doing my cross compliance and stuff as well on my board, be a, just that they won't be coming across as multiple treatments then inside in the milk recording, you know? Yeah. And, and that has been taken out of it now, okay? And then there's also a question there, mm -hmm. Dan, about, um, and George is actually just after joining us there now, so maybe George, you might be able to comment on it. Is it imperative that we're going to focus on health subindex when selecting for breeding cows into the future so as to try and stave off any risks around uh, cell count and so forth? Or what's your thoughts on that? And uh, I'll ask you first, Dan, and, and George sure is after unmuting there, so he's uh, going to make a comment on it at some point as well, I'd imagine. Yeah, George, you want to go first? Or you go first. You go uh, ahead or, there go. first. Yeah. Well, I, I'd agree. I, I, I think it's going to be a huge thing. And to be honest, Stuart, even just standing back and looking at the way legislation is, if you see, look, they want antibiotic reduction of what, 30, 40, 50 percent. Um, look at the select, look at the way the selective dry co is going. Um, just the whole way the industry is going. If, if, if the crutch of the antibiotic is going to be removed from us, what other ways have we do? We reduce the level of infection through records. Um, through better management, but breeding is a is a fundamental pillar inside this. It's going to be huge. It's going to be massive. And then and the, the speed at which it's going to move is, I think, it's going to be frightening. And we won't really realise this until we're in the middle of the selective dry co when the antibiotics are pulled, and that's not that far away. And it'll come to onto us very very fast. So as farmers, lads, you, you have to start looking at it and look. George, you 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 have a lot more work done than I would. I suppose where I'd come in on it, Stuart, is uh, when we're selecting teams of bulls at this stage, where we've a target there of around five euro for health sub-index. That's not to say that you wouldn't include a bull in your team who is negative on health, but on, on average, the team would, we're looking at positive teams and a positive team average of around five euro, if at all possible at all. And the reason for that is, as cows last longer over the course of a lactation, over, over the course of a lifetime, there'll be more uh, challenges facing them from, um, in terms of all the, all the health issues, in, including mastitis resistance. So every little bit counts. And if we can breed more healthy cows from a genetic perspective, well, then the, the challenge from a cell count perspective will be reduced. Okay, very good. So just again, before we move on there, Dan, so there's a question in from a person that saying that their average bull tank for the year is below 200,000, except for a little blip. Uh, that went slightly above it in February, but the milk recording steadily rises to 300 uh, up to March, and then it starts to drop again. What would the cause of that be likely to be? Just an interesting okay. one. So, so he's getting, they're getting a rise. They're getting a rise in the milk recording up until March, is it? Yeah. And, and then it's tapering away off then as it's coming back down, as this season is going on, is it? But the, but the bull tank isn't going above the 200. 
and the bull tank isn't going above 200. Okay, all right, okay. Um, I, so I presume, like, there's a couple of things that happen with this is the more frequent the testing is done in the bull tank, that's, got, that's telling us an awful lot from the point of view of the milk recording. Okay, the rise in the milk recording usually coming in with up to March like that is nearly always linked to an environmental infect, infection coming in around February, March. We saw an awful lot of it this year because February and March was so difficult. Um, the, the thing with, you see, why the bull tank mightn't be, uh, where he'd need to look for there is, the percentage contribution of certain cows to certain cell counts within the milk recording that they mightn't be having as much an impact in the bull tank as well. The other thing I suppose is is the, to, is that my milk recording could be high, my bull tank is low, but certain number of those cows are just going to calves. There's a management issue in it. That's not to say it happens in that herd, but that's one of the reasons why there's an anomaly within the milk recording in February and March. The second reason is when they're high like that to match and then correct them themselves as the season goes on. That's generally a strep infection. That's generally a strep infection. No, we're seeing an awful lot of strep infections. No, me and June and cows out. We saw a lot of it in February and March. Um, in that in that scenario, with that, the biggest thing with that that client is that it, when the bull tank has held steady so good like that and never gone over 200,000, his treatment regime and the clinical case of mastitis that he gets must be very good. And he must be getting a very good response because it's not leaving, um, how would you put it, it's not leaving collateral damage after the treatment in the sense like in the herd we're, we're looking at at the moment, do you know? Yeah. Okay, so I'm sure I, I just need to change the screen around here now, I think. Um, well, we're going to look yet now, lads, as well, Stuart, there's a, you know, there's a thing called profiles. It's within the um, ICBF and herd plus and you get a milk recording, but it's, it's a fantastic tool. Um, what we're trying to do now is we're going to do it this way so that we can show you how to actually access it and use it. This is, I find this a brilliant tool, especially this is a classic brilliant one now for the lads that are on four times a year milk recording. So you, you go into your menu, right down to profiles, new profiles, and across to milk recording SEC. Okay, so all right, this is going to bring up all the herd with all its somatic cell counts uh, over the last 11 times, okay? So what I do when I heard like, so you can see here now, there's a jumbo tag, the lactation number, the previous dry date, the calving date. If I put in a dry date, it would go in there. And look, I can see cows that got a dry cow tube and a sealer, or with a sealer only. So I, I'll know now, I can, if you hit that up arrow there now in the treatments, just at the treatments there now, It'll, it'll put all the sealer only ones. So there are all the heifers with nothing. If you hit it again now, Stuart, to bring it the other way. Yeah, so there are all the sealer only ones there now. So I can see now, is there any, I could see there now, is there any, anything relating to the sealer only? Do you know, so I can see down along, is there just, is there a sealer only factor in this? And to be fair, in this there's not. Do you know, that's just a general observation, okay? But it's just, that's something in this that you can see. You can see now, look, num there's, is there cases of mastitis with sealer only? There's one there, and there's another one down here, okay? So we just scroll away down and see, is there any pattern on that? Look, that's not bad. We're in the sealer only group, there's nothing really, like you can see here now, there's one case there, but that's with a dry cow and a sealer group, okay? What I do then is, I go back up to, uh, there to over lactation, and I go from one to one. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting all the first calvers there as a bunch. And I go over to the June 17 one and I hit the up arrow. Okay, I hit it again because I want to put the worst to the best. So what that's going to do now is it's going to put them from the worst to the best. So I have a heifer there now, high all along. I've, there's four heifers really there in, in trouble. Three of them are just recently in trouble. But there's one heifer there that is a significant infection at 3272. We're going to scroll away down there now. We'll just have a look at our heifers. So I can, there's the heifers, and look, they're going away nicely. And I can there's see our, my pattern. There's my our stress heifer now that we were talking exactly. about on the problem cow report. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So scroll. in general, Kevin down quite well. Yep. And no like, issue there. If there, why am I asking that? Why do I look here? If there was an issue with heifers, to so highlight there, you'd have a heavy uh, conversation about sealing heifers and all this, and that's for another day. But if you look at the blue bar on top, it shows the 19 heifers 
There's 19 out of 109 animals inside that. Then I go back to my lactation where Stuart, and I go two to two. So that's just going to bring me up my second calves. Two. All right. Yeah. And two, two. Grand job. And I do the same again now. I rank them from the worst to the best. Yeah. And go hit it again. Grand job. So scroll up there now a little bit. Right, sir. So these were good. And yeah, yeah that's that's good. Second so that's group. The second group were good, which is highlights. Remember, they were about 49,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, you see that 9999 million there? See that one there now? Do you know, she's like, so she. She wasn't in, she had two treatments, you can see with her, the average, the last, like, so this is, why am I looking at this? This is a great one now for the profile one, because I have the average, the, the average for last lactation, I have the average for this lactation, and I can scroll across, I can see the last number of recordings that are there, so I can, I know I have eight recordings or whatever is there inside in the sheet, you know? Um, so more than likely an actual mastitis case. Oh, there. that's it. Yeah, exactly. And as you can see, you can see there with the two there beside you, bang on. Yeah. Um. So next one now is we'll go to the three to three. To three. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, and we we'll scroll best to worst again. And uh, again, good group there. So scroll away fine. And then what I do then is just go four to plus, like it is in the summary. Just go four. And then delete the tree. And she'll bring after. If you just put it four, Stuart, four, she'll go there. Yeah. Sorry. And there's 48 cows there. And this is our ranking then from best to worst. So, yeah, worst to best. So, there's a number of cows. So, what I'm looking at there is was there cows in trouble in 19? So, there's a number of cows there. And, and the higher lactation should probably will be get should get the road there's still a level of infection we need to get the level of infection down inside this herd we need to call we need to uh, address the drying off a bit better and um we need to look at the heifers up but the other thing what's probably worth doing then Stuart, is do the treatments if you go get rid of the four now say and we'll just put the whole herd in there yeah get rid of that there now so all the herd is back 109 109 and rank we'll go to treatments now Hit that one. Hit it again. So now, so these are, this co 1969 is after three cases of mastitis. These are the ones now, you see that slip under the radar. This is what Stuart was mentioning earlier. These cows, three cases of mastitis. We'll assume now that they're recorded right, that they're three actual cases of mastitis. So it's a seventh lactation co. You think, geez, she's grand with cell count, pattering way lovely. Look at February 13. February 13th of February, 1.3 million. This is these are the type of cows that slip under the radar. It's just even with the frequency of milk recording, this cow is slipping through the net. If that makes sense, she's still a chronic cow, and that's why the the cell count is so devious. Like we think it's very straightforward with just cell counts and cell counts and cell counts, and it is to the vast majority of it, but it's not always. And that's she's your classic. Type one, the age is against her. She's a seven lactation co. She's a uh, all right, not bad last year. To be very interesting, no. What you do is you'd go into a, a profile, you'd scroll, look at last year to see what was that co. So if you hit hit her number there now, hit that there now, Stuart. Yeah, it's just going to open up and you will go down along <clears throat> and you'll be able to see the cell counts right there. Uh, da, 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 there, down along for the, her lactations. So very good, but she's in trouble on the sixth and the seventh lactation. A little bit, and they're not bad. But what you need to go in is on the sixth lactation is go back and see what did she follow the same pattern as the previous one. Okay, and th these are very exceptions because they are she's still a very good cow, but they are the type of cows that can slip through the net. And then, Dan, is, is there anything being highlighted there in terms of the actual tube that was used, mm -hmm. maybe? given that she wasn't recorded on the 27th of uh, October, like, and yeah. like she's dried off kind of early, but it looks of it possibly yeah. Yeah. Um, calved again then in February or was, was recorded in February. She coded maybe was dried off early to try and combat that cell count that maybe that had been creeping up or something like that. But that's, that I'd say, I'd say you're bang on. And I'd say that's what happened with her. I'd say she was dried off early to give her every chance to be right for this year. She yeah. calved down in trouble. She pattered away along, and I'd say she was shedding in between that, in between the 20s. 
and did, you know, and then made and she crapped up on the radar again. But it's again, Stuart, we wouldn't really have taken much notice of this cow only for the tree treatments. This is the point. If if I if we weren't looking at the tree treatments of the clinical cases of mastitis, we wouldn't be talking about this cow. Reality, we wouldn't like. We wouldn't. They would go and notice in us. And that's why as farmers to keep on top of this, like it's it's very, very important to be recording the case the cases, not the treatment, the cases. I know that's number of treatments, that should be number of cases to keep yeah. it consistent. It's the number of cases we're doing, we're looking for. And um that's why this, this profile page that you can do an awful lot of fooling around with and it's fantastic. You get a great insight into Okay, so Dan, um, just just uh, I'll ask you a quick question, then and I'll just go through the other questions that are. There's a couple of questions after coming in again now. Since, um, just then drawing off quarters and things like that, is that yeah. an option for people right now? And how do they go about it? Okay, it is an option. We're over peak, and a good way of doing it. How do I do it? A couple. Um, so, really, see, I've identified my quarter. It's a back right quarter. You could just stop milking it, okay? And that quarter will bag up. It will shut, it will take about two, three weeks to shut down and that will weaken off and lighten down. Where the ones you have to be careful of is a quarter that's getting reoccurring cases of clinical mastitis, right? I've treated a number of times, but I just can't cure it. Well, I've seen the best way of doing that is I milk that cow as a three-quarter cow for three milkings. And on the fourth milking, I milk her as a four-quarter cow dumping the milk. And you do that for about three to four milkings and it really lightens down the quarter and that quarter will start shutting down. Okay. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a very handy way because some of these cows, when we'll dry them off, there could be a little absence right there, can pop, and these, some of these cows can get very sick with it, you know, and it, it can be very difficult to do it, you know? Yeah. Look, it's bigger hairs might find it more difficult to do it. It's definitely an option if, if fellas can build in a system that they can record it. But what have I done? I've done three things. I've converted that cow from a millionaire down to one or two hundred thousand. I've stopped that quarter from spreading it. I'm giving if the age is with him, it's first, second, third, fourth, lactation, the chance that they could be right next year. You can see the older they are, up to seven lactation. It's unlikely to work. So I'm doing a lot of things by drying the quarter. And I'm able to farm my way out of it. So I'm able to last in milk yield, taps five, ten percent. There's probably no last now at this stage of lactation because the capacity is in the other three quarters. Yes. You know, so it's a, it's a great management tool to farm your way out of it. But controlling the spread of the infection is the real advantage in it. And the old adage of time is a great healer, of course, is the other thing that's oh, possibly there for the younger ones as well. Right. So you're not dry couch tubing it or anything. You're just letting no. it close down, just but you're giving down. it time. Yeah, some will seal it. To be honest, there's no real need. I wouldn't bother. Um, you know... Uh, Try and use, uh, make sure you're using a teeth spray with a fly repellent that there's a peppermint smell off it because, you know, that the flies wouldn't be spreading infection around. Look, we know we're out full whack now. There's no back and cubicles, so there's no risk of her leaking on cubicles or anything like that. So that's why it's a good time to do it. Okay, so there's um, just on the profiles thing, I'll um, leave the ring from ICBF is just after sending me a comment there that if people download that to Excel, they actually can um, get the 10 recordings displayed on the screen, oh, but they can only fit yeah. six on the screen for the actual web-based version of it. Now, Great um, point. Great point. a tricky one for you, Dan, I suppose. Yeah. Te tactical answer required, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Garlic boluses and homeopathic, homeopathic treatments. Yeah. Are yeah, they a yeah. complete waste of time or are they effective? Look, I suppose, Stuart, if, if you look at the environment we're working in at the moment, these type of preparations, you'd be pushing an open door for them. The industry wants them to work. We want them to work because we don't want to be using antibiotics. But right. the reality on the ground is we're not getting consistent, repeatable results from these type of preparations. You know, I know there will be clients that say, yes, I have got a bounce, but equally on the other side, there's another five or six that are not getting it. And that, the evidence just isn't backing them up. And like, it isn't that we don't want them to work. We, of course, yeah. we want them to work because sure, if the Arigol or Carberry or any co-op said, I can give you milk with no antibiotics in it, sure, there's no problem. But the reality is, Stuart, I, I, I think I, I, I couldn't endorse them anyway. That's my own personal opinion. But. Okay. Very good. Um, 
Another kind of uh, personal question from a person asking 10 out of 30 heifers calving down with uh, um, counts greater than 200 and only yeah. two have cell count greater than 200 in the second recording. Yeah. Can you assume that that is just due to stress or is there something else going on there? Well, be, we need to be careful with that kind of answer is, is because it's an easy way to find out if it was stress or not is if he paddle test them like we talked earlier, right? That's got no because they're corrected. But it's something this that operator or any whoever's listening, that's what they should be doing next spring is making sure that those 10 are paddle tested. The fact that they corrected that fast, you see, you can get certain bacteria that just live in the ducts of the teeth. They don't go high up into the other. And um, with the flushing, as the, as the heifer leaves down the milk and her milk let down and the oedema breaks down and she starts flushing out, they flush out the infection out of the other and they sort themselves out. And it's probably more than likely something like that, a dysgalactia, something like that, that's, that doesn't go high up into the, up into the ducts. So okay. I would say that. But look, Nick, he, he's in a good place in the sense it hasn't left a mark on the heifers. I'd be just saying, look, you make sure you paddle test the heifers next spring. Maybe consider looking at something like teeth spraying the heifers before calving, something like that. But it's something quite small. Yeah. yeah. And then a, a very the final question that I have here at the moment, anyway, is a very good one. How do you do a culture test and who tests it? Okay. How do you do a culture test? Great one. No, first thing so is if we think about a culture test, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the bacteria that's in the other of the cow, not in the environment. So hygiene is crucial. Look, ideally, I think they're worth it for the value of you. Maybe if the vet is around, that you keep in a few cows just it. But anyway, we'll assume that's not there, that you can't get your vet to do it and you'll do it yourself. I, well, I, the, way, the best way I find to do it is you'll pre-spray, you'll clean down your cow, first couple of squirts onto the ground, hold the bottle outside the rump rail. Don't go in under the cow. There's too much of a risk of, of environmental contaminants getting into the sample. And just squirt the milk from a distance trying to get into it. To be in the milk sample bottle itself, all we need is about two, three, four mils. We do not need a bottle full. The more you squirt into that bottle, the more the risk of getting contaminants into the bottle. And you're, then you just cap it into the fridge, cow number and date. But you can freeze them. Get into the habit of taking the samples, cow date, cow number, date, and freeze them. And they are valid for four months. They're a great body of work to take in if you want to go picking out a dry cow later on as well. You could drop in your six or seven samples, which are both tank, or which are your individual samples. And who does them? There's some oh, like, like certain co ops yeah. like like Glambia, you have the regional vet labs, you have like animal health laboratories, you have the equine lab. There, there's you have the what's the lab of them, Raskaman doing it? Farm lab diagnostics. Farm lab diagnostics, yeah. you have FBA. There's a big and to be fair, a very good quality results from that. To be fair to the lads that are doing it, they can only do it with the quality results coming in. But be very, very careful taking them. Yeah, Don't so be I mean, afraid of no growths. That's the other thing that comes back. No growths. The cow may not be shedding it. So you may have to do number of samples. Don't be despondent that it came back as a no growth. And don't do a sample within a month of a cow calving or cow treating. You know, if she reoccurs again or something, you know, like the no pint sampler at least over a month from the end of treatment. So your ideal scenario really in terms of trying to build up what's the causative agent of your mastitis is you, you spot your cow with your mastitis take the sample from her straight away before you treat her and as you said freeze it for up to four months maybe before you send it away at all you don't have yeah. to be running back with every individual sample you can actually kind of stock pool them or stockpile them or you can and look look at the start of the year you're going to want to get it in fairly fast to know what you're dealing with and yeah. during, during the year is going along you probably have a good idea what it is because they clinically look the same but keep taking away your samples and that it's a great body of work to be going to pick out your trico Okay, so um, we'll wrap it up with that. So Dan, I suppose I might just ask you to, I suppose, three kind of key points that people should kind of bear in mind over the next two or three months, I suppose, in, if they're looking at their milk recordings, what should they be looking to do in particular with that milk recording? I suppose the first one is probably look at your milk recording report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for the cell count point of view, as much as the uh, everybody looks loves to see what your cow is performing best at the moment or have a look down through them and see what way the different groups are performing. But from a cell count point of view, there's a lot of information in there that's going to uh, going to waste, I suppose, for want of a better way of describing it, maybe. Yeah. 
one thing I would say, Stuart, after what we've had to chat there now today, and hopefully it'll highlight the importance of recording the treatments. So lads, an awful lot of lads have their whiteboard and then, you know, there's a list of 10 or 20 cows that have got mastitis over the last couple of months. When things are quieter there, go back in and log in and, and put in those treatments. And they'll be there then for your next milk recording showing up in your reports. Do you know, go away and log them. You have them. Go away and put them in. Just, just because I didn't put them in no straight away, you can, you can go back and put them in, you know, no. So recording the case of treatments. Look, don't underestimate what the infected cow will do. In a year like this year, you know, the late lactation milk is going to be extremely valuable to your business. It's, it's very important every year. It's high salad. It's, it's the one where all the bills are paid. It's your milk. That's the one thing about the October, November, September, October milk. That's yours. That, you know, to a major Depression. course, because a lot of the bills are straightened out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if I have to shut down early because of cell count, I'm, it is really, it is, I'm robbing myself of family cash, if that makes sense. So stop stopping the spread of infection. No, it's crucial. Don't underestimate those problem cows. And if there's a cow with a clot in the first pull or two and then the milk is fine, shut the quarter down and identify her to get rid of her. She is your chronic type of cow. Clot in the first pull, then the milk is fine. Go away for a week or 10 days and then come back. But just be very careful of that. Um, I think that the, the recording the case of mastitis, stopping the spread by dipping the clusters or keeping them last, Something like that. And I, I'm, I'm a big advocate, just from a treatment point of view, when you talk to your vets about this, is just using an anti-inflammatory to control the pain and mastitis. Even though we may not see an, inf an inflammation, as in a swollen quarter, mastitis is an inflammatory response. That's what cell count is. It's an inflammatory response. So don't underestimate the pain of it. And it does, Im it does in I think, uh, from anecdotal evidence, it hugely improves the cure rate inside mastitis. Talk to your vet, Ned. Very good, Dan. That's super. Thanks a million. And as this, as we both said there, we're, we're going to get Dan to come back again later in the year as we approach dry off to talk through, maybe looking through the reports again to identify cows for a selective dry cow. And we'll um, have more information in relation to the selective at that stage. It's just too much to bite off in one session, really. Oh, so yeah, we need yeah. to get you back another day. All so right. thanks a million, Dan. And thanks to George for joining us there. Perfect timing as always, George. And uh, the other thing that I'd like to say is that next week we're going to be talking to Dr. Orla Keane from Chagas and Grange to talk about entomintic resistance. So Dan has been talking about antibiotic resistance. Orla is going to talk about the, the risk of wormers and so forth, building resistance within the herd there so that wormers become ineffective and so forth. So we look forward to hearing from Orla next week. Thanks again to Dan and to George and to Parik for looking after things in the background as well. And we'll see you next week. Please God, take care. That's all for this week's Let's Talk Dairy webinar series. And don't forget to look out for more bonus episodes each week. I'll be back with our usual Dairy Edge interview on Monday, so do listen in then. I'm Emma Louise Coffey, and thanks for listening. <laughs>